This edition of Dolphins Today is made possible by Manscaped. You can get 20% off and free shipping on all their men's grooming products simply by using promo code DOLPHINS over at manscaped.com. Before we get into today's mailbag, who here is excited about the upcoming Dolphins season, the preseason game, of course, we'll be live for? If you are excited, hit that like button right now. First up on the mailbag from Jackson, is Jonathan Taylor linked to the Dolphins? Speculatively, yes. In reality, I'm not so sure. Uh, look, look, the Colts and Taylor, that relationship is about as bad as you'll see, at least in the public airing of it. You've got the owner subtweeting the player, the agent clapping back, the player injured, which maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Uh, it, it's a mess. And... He has a trade request out there. I, I'm not sure it's going to be granted. On one hand, why he's been speculative linked is, look, the Dolphins had interest in Dalvin Cook. They did not get that done. The offer wasn't high enough. And Taylor's an even better player than what Dalvin Cook is at this stage of his NFL career. Taylor, the past three years, has been one of the better backs, if not, like, you know, top five, top three, whatever, in the NFL, despite a down season last year, in part because of injuries, you know, in part because... The offensive line wasn't good and he wasn't as effective. But I have issues going after Taylor for a couple reasons. Number one, although Taylor is better than what you have between Raheem Mostert, Jeff Wilson, Devon A. Chain, and probably two or three of those guys combined even, I think you can get by at a cheaper cost with Mostert, Wilson, and A. Chain on your roster. It would also be expensive from a trade capital perspective. Yeah, the relationship is bad. Indy's not going to give away Taylor for nothing. Uh, I think a second-round pick is the rough asking price uh, from Indy. Maybe it rises, maybe it dips, depending on how many teams are interested. I think that's your rough starting point. That's a premium pick to give up when you've done a lot of giving up picks in the past. Plus, the actual money involved. You know, Dalvin Cook signed for $7 million with incentives for more there. Taylor probably wants about double that, plus a lot of that money guaranteed. And in the modern-day NFL, even though I do think there's some return of the ground game coming, uh, run the football down the throats, I think that will be based on more great offensive lines, more than highly paid backs. I mean, you can look at the, the history. It's not been great for, se for second contracts for backs. Frankly, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb have worked great. Alvin Kamara hasn't been the same guy, if we're being honest. Christian McCaffrey already got traded. Dalvin Cook got cut. Zeke got cut. Aaron Jones took a pay cut. Like there's The franchise tag guys are almost in the top five. So I am hesitant to give up a premium pick and then pay Taylor big money. So what would you guys do? More mailbag questions to come, but sound off on this one. Would you trade for Jonathan Taylor? Y for yes or N for no? It's the pinned comment. If the ad comes on YouTube, Take advantage. Go vote right now. From RS Swimmer 84 who has some potential Dolphins trade deadline acquisitions? Seems like Greer likes the current roster, but we could need some reinforcements midseason. Of some bigger names who hypothetically could be available, two notable defensive players I'll make note of here. I feel like I have to mention Aaron Donald, but I doubt he ends up getting moved. Uh, Isaiah Simmons, if the Cardinals are bad, is a prime candidate. And you know, imagine a defense that's got Isaiah Simmons and J Javon Holland back there. He's playing safety right now, but you can make him a box linebacker if you wanted to. I will mention three offensive linemen. Pittsburgh's actually deep along the interior. Maybe James Daniels starts. Maybe Nate Herbig does. One of those guys is a good name to consider. Ryan Jensen, if you want to try Connor Williams at guard, if the left guard's a disaster, Jensen could be available. Uh, for the Miami Dolphins after I what I expect to be a not very good season, although Jensen's not healthy yet, so that's a big-time red flag. And speaking of red flags, that's like 80% of what Makai Becton does. He is a physically talented player, but the coaching staff in New York has issues with him, and he struggles to just remain on the field. So that'd be a very gambly uh, trade, but <laughs> the, Jets, the Jets might be over him already. Now, today's show is made possible by Manscaped. You can get the Performance Package 4.0, complete with the Lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker, the most comfortable boxers known to man, and some more goodies, including ball deodorant. 
and you get 20% off and free shipping simply by using promo code DOLPHINS over at manscaped.com. That link, by the way, will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. If you want the best in men's grooming, you have to be using Manscaped. It is 2023, folks. If you're not manscaping, you're, you're going to have less success than you would like, or at least less sustained success. Check the comment section and the description. It's manscaped.com, promo code DOLPHINS. From Dr. Dummy Beta, Welp, there goes any chance on Cook and Elliott. Any other backs Miami is hoping to get maybe around the trade deadline. We mentioned the Jonathan Taylor situation. I'm not convinced they're in the market for a back. If they do want to go make a trade for someone, five names to maybe consider monitoring, of course, depending on what happens for these particular teams, outside, of course, of, uh, of Jonathan Taylor. Josh Jacobs, uh, we'll see how that relationship goes. If the Cardinals are bad, James Conner should be traded. I think that actually does make sense there. The Falcons have... Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, and Cordero Patterson. Do you need three? One of those guys not named Bijan. We'll put Cordero over there over Algier since he's older. Could make some sense. The Chiefs have depth at running back, and Clyde edwards helaire has kind of fallen out of favor. And if you want a pass catching back, if maybe Devon A. Chain struggles, uh, CEH could fit that mold. And again, unlikely, but I will make note of Derrick Henry. If the Titans fall apart before the trade deadline, Shipping out Henry for a rebuild could actually make some sense. So sound off for me in the comment section. Name a player who you guys want to trade for. Any player, any team, any position, drop that name in the comments. For Mark, I'm going to pronounce it as Doucette. If I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mark. Uh, why don't we change our center, Connor Williams, back to left guard and find a solid center who is still available? Well, the short answer is, assuming that the Dolphins trust Connor Williams at left guard, assuming that's the case, I don't know if there is one. Ben Jones is the obvious name out there at the, at the center position, but Tennessee moved on from him despite good play, which is a red flag to me and oftentimes indicates maybe Ben Jones doesn't have much left in the tank at his age, at his injury concerns. So if you're trying to get the best five out there, you very well might want to try Connor Williams back there at left guard. And maybe Dan Feeney could actually be, be an option. I'm not sure the Dolphins feel the same way there, but I do think there is just a lack of other, in general, offensive line options out there. Dolphin 13, though, does mention the one big one that I would have interest in. Listen to you guys all the time, and I want to know why and where is Dalton Reisner. I really appreciate you guys' knowledge, but right now we need an offensive lineman like Yesterday. Well, I appreciate that, Dolphin 13. I think it's weird that Dalton Reisner's unsigned. I know he wasn't as good last season, and he didn't have his best results on the field, and I am inclined. I saw a clip of a Broncos guy that I trust and follow, like, I think it was Field Yates asked, where's Dalton Reisner? And he quote tweeted Dalton Reisner uh, kind of getting lost uh, in terms of the, 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 the center gets beat no one helps the center. Both guards miss and rise in that position. But, like, I'm also thinking to myself, like, yeah, but the right guard got beat there, too. Like, nobody helped the center, and it was both guards, and it was, ah, see, it was Reisner. I'm kind of like, isn't that an indication that the entire offense was bad? Look, Sean Payton got in trouble for saying the quiet part out loud. I thought Nathaniel Hackett did a garbage job in Denver last year. I think that was a him problem, too. Reisner's been pretty good in years past. I'm inclined to believe that it was maybe a coaching thing. Still, the fact he's unsigned in mid-August, maybe there's more going on there. Now, we will be live for the Dolphins-Texans game this weekend. It will, we will only be live on Dolphins, so I won't have to be nice to the Texans fans. In fact, I'll be pretty mad, mean to our Texans host, uh, Jeremy Chuggs, over there. So make sure you guys are subscribed, youtube.com slash Dolphins News. From... B, can't we save $10 million next year by cutting or, if possible, trading Cedric Wilson? You would save a good amount of money uh, if you could trade Cedric Wilson. I don't think anyone is taking on the roughly six or, or $5 million he's owed in guaranteed base salary this year. Here's how it breaks down if you were to cut Cedric Wilson. His cap hit this year is 8 
$5 million. There's some signing bonus mixed in there. You would save $2 million in the event you release him. That would incur a $6 million dead cap. So cap savings plus dead cap equals your cap hit of $6 million bucks next year. And this number actually doesn't change if you do it now or next season. You save $7.3 million. Only $1 million in dead cap is left over. That's the signing bonus stuff that had been paid out previously. His base salary this year is guaranteed, or at least a, a big portion of it is. I don't think anyone wants to, wants to trade for him unless you were to eat some of that money. So it comes down to, is the $2 million bucks enough in savings? And who is, for a player who has not been that impressive so far in camp, unfortunately. What would you do with Cedric Wilson? K for keep. C for cut. Get those answers in for me. Where else but the comment section right now. Mike Nintendo Master, which by the way, who'd you play with uh, in Smash Bros? I was the guy who only did down B with Kirby because I suck at the game. Uh, who's RB1? I believe it's Raheem Mostert, but you will see other backs on this team. You'll see Jeff Wilson get some run. You'll see Devon A-Chain get some, some playing time as well. Uh, one of probably Gaskin Ackman makes the team too barring some weird, another addition, which I don't think is going to happen. But I think Mostert, when healthy, is going to be your lead back. He fits the offensive scheme. And then maybe you just make Devon H. Chain kind of your third down back. Get him involved in, on some screens. Get him involved in the passing game. Outside runs. I wouldn't be that shocked if by the end of the year, A. Chain is getting a bigger workload than what, it'll, than what it'll be getting at the start of the season. Remember, first year guys take time. Be patient. It's not an overnight thing, but the running back spot is an easier to contribute at uh, position from that perspective, but I do think Mostert is your answer for that number one spot uh, in the running back room. We'll see how it all plays out this season.